Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kilowatt. My name is Bodie, and I am your host. And we have a little bit of news for you today. Uh, when I say a little bit, I, I do mean a little bit. There wasn't that much uh, news that I thought was interesting. So let's go ahead and jump into our news. By the way, I do know that it's a new month and that I owe thanks to our patrons and uh, folks that support us on ACAST. However, I'm going to do that when I get my laptop back because I'm trying to cram in three episodes of the show today, getting them written, edited, and you know prepared. And then on top of that, I have to edit a episode of Shuffle Playlist because today is the uh, season two, episode one launch date. And I haven't done that yet. So, yeah, fun stuff, really. Uh, it's nine o'clock at night. So let's let's get on it. Uh, let's start with Nikola. Nikola has started production of their 500 mile range fuel cell semi truck, which is powered by hydrogen. I had to drive down to Tucson last week to pick up my the charger, the wall connector for my Tesla, and I saw two of these. Now, it could have been the same one because I was driving south the first time I saw one, and I was driving north the next time I saw one, and it was driving south. And uh, yeah, we were going in opposite directions, but still, they're out there on the road, and they are, are they are testing them. So I haven't seen any broken down. And I do see these trays occasionally on the 202, just kind of cruising, uh, sometimes on the the 101 as well. If you live in the Phoenix area, you know what I'm talking about. But I, I see them on local freeways often. The National Highway Transportation Safety Administration is investigating Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys for having loose steering control or excuse me, for losing steering control and uh, power steering. It's been a long day. So we don't have any more details on this investigation other than, you know, 12 uh, owners have reported that they either lost steering control or power steering just kind of putzed out on them. Uh, the scope of the, the investigation includes 280,000 Model 3s and Model Ys. So that's a lot. That's a lot for sure. Um, I'll, I'll keep you posted as we, as we hear more at the Q2 2023 earnings call, Elon announced that you, if you bought a new Tesla in Q3 of 2023 and you owned FSD, so you've previously paid for it. Like, let's just pretend that in 2019, you bought a model three with full self-driving and, uh, you wanted to buy a new car, you can now transfer your FSD from that old car to the new car only during Q3 2023. So now we have some more details on that. So I just want to go over those details real quick. And uh, Michael on Twitter shared these with me. So thank you, Michael, for doing that. Uh, here are the details. You have to take delivery by September 30th, 2023. You, that doesn't mean you order it. That means you receive the car before that date. You also need to make sure that you configure the new car with full self-driving. <laughs> you have to be the legal owner and current registrant of the current car with full self-driving. So in this example, it's our 2019 Model 3. The current Tesla and new Tesla need to be in the same Tesla account. And then there's some additional terms and conditions, but those are the main things. And honestly, Tesla's using this as an opportunity to, to sell Tesla's to current owners, you know, that, that paid for FSD. You know, if that's a sticking point for you, you're going to buy a new car. Really, it doesn't cost Tesla any more to do this. It doesn't cost them anything actually. And they get somebody to buy a new car. So, um, I don't think they're, they're doing this to be nice. They're doing this to sell cars. If they're doing it to be nice and considerate to their <laughs> to the Tesla owners who bought full self driving and never received it, if they were if they were, they were making things right, then they they would have made this a more long term solution instead of like here's a very short amount of time that you have to do this. Hurry up and do it. Buy this car. Yeah, uh, it's for them to sell more cars. But if you get to take advantage of this, then think that's awesome. Good for you. NASA is launching its own streaming service. I'm actually really excited about this. It's going to be called NASA Plus, 
And here's a quote from NASA. We're putting space on demand and at your fingertips with NASA's new streaming platform. Eric Etkind, Associate Administrator of Office of Communications, NASA headquarters, said during the reveal, transforming our digital presence will help us better tell the stories of how NASA explores the unknown in the air and space, uh, in air and space, excuse me, and inspires through discovery and innovates uh, for the benefit of humanity. Now, I think this is amazing. This is something I would have loved at six, seven, eight years old because I loved watching uh, Nova shows with my dad, for instance. Like the one of the few things that we did together that uh, I truly enjoyed, right? which makes that sound worse than it really was. But anyway, like I have fond memories of watching space launches in the seventies, uh, in the eighties. I think I've mentioned it on the show before, like during the challenger launch, they wheeled the TV into the classroom. And then soon after, soon after it blew up, they wheeled the TV out of the classroom. And there was just, I just remember it being a very somber day that day, but anyway, on to you know, happier news. NASA Plus is going to be free, it's going to be ad-free, and it's going to be family family friendly. friendly. <laughs> Unlike those words are not friendly to my mouth. Uh, they're, they're going to have an app for iOS, Android, Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and they'll have uh, their website as well. I think this is awesome. My family, we're going to install this on all of our devices. And what a neat way to share what NASA has been up to. And you know, I want to be able to go back and, and look at those really early launches and and share that with my kids. Like my daughter wants to be a doctor, which uh, she's well on her way. She's a really smart kid. My son wants to be an experimental physicist. I'm not entirely sure he knows what that means, but he knew what an experimental physicist was before I knew what an experimental physicist was. So he's already ahead of me in this regard. Um. So, yeah, I think, you know, sitting down and watching these shows as a family, I think that would be really, really interesting and, and a good way as a family to learn. So I think this is awesome. All right. I have one more thing before we end today's show. I'm in a texting group with a gentleman named Thomas. Uh, on this thread that we had going was... Uh, a news story that Tesla is inflating range numbers and not giving true range. Um, and then when people were making service appointments to, um, to, to bring their car in because it wasn't getting the range they were being told or sold, uh, Tesla had a special group of people that were canceling those uh, service appointments. So, I'm not going to go into what the group was saying one way or the other, because uh, this is largely opinion based. And I think you can have whatever opinion you want on this. But here's what I have to here are my thoughts on it. When I get up in the morning and I go out to my car, I have a range. Let's say it's 251 miles. So of that 251 miles that I have, I know that that is the most optimistic range number that that uh, there could be. Like if I was in Southern California on a perfect day, no hills, no wind, you know, slightly overcast, I might get something close to that 251 miles of range, right? That seems reasonable to me. But to me, this is only a potential range. It does not take into effect temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold. It does not take into effect uh, grade. Are you going up a grade, down a grade? It doesn't take into effect wind. That number to me is just the potential that that car could do on a perfect day. And even then, I don't believe it because I don't think that car companies as a general rule are honest about it. Um, I can tell you that the other day I had to pick up some stuff in the yard before taking my kids to school. They were in the car. The air conditioner was running. I was out uh, doing stuff in the morning in Phoenix during the one of the hard, hottest parts of the year, right? It was probably already 101 degrees. It, it was just really, really hot outside. And I was out picking up stuff uh, from the yard because we have a soaker system for our trees. So I was picking that all up so the neighbors don't get mad at me. And my kids were in the car for about 10 minutes and the air conditioning was going and I lost about 12 miles of range just for the car sitting there and... <laughs> uh, cooling my children. 
So I don't uh, like I don't think that Tesla inflating these numbers is a big deal. I do think Tesla canceling or having a special group or, you know, I think it was uh, said in the article, it was like a secret group. Uh, but I do think that Tesla having a, a group of people just canceling people's reserva- or, uh, service appointments, I do think that that's wrong. Like the, the, the one part doesn't bother me. The range stuff doesn't bother me that much. The uh, the, the, them canceling service appointments that does bother me. Now I fully admit that I don't know what those conversations were between the Tesla representative and, and the, um, owner of the Tesla. I, I don't know what that, uh, that conversation looked like. Maybe it was educational. It kind of sounds like from the article, it wasn't, but maybe it was even in that situation, Tesla should be out ahead of this. And, and doing a better job of explaining expected range. I think that Elon uses uh, the phrase, people just don't understand a lot. And I think that's largely because Elon has a tendency to overinflate the ability of its uh, of the cars that you know his company built. People don't understand a lot of these things because you know of Elon, I think. I, um, I do think a simple, uh, I think some education on what the car is capable of and not capable of is is reasonable. I also think that it's probably um, like as far as these range estimates, from my understanding, the government sets up here is the the way to test for range or miles per gallon if it's an ice car. But the the automakers do their own tests. And I'm sure they only cherry pick the best data from their own test. And it may be a thing where maybe the National Highway T- Transportation Safety Institute or whoever manages that needs to be like, okay, give us three cars for X amount of days so that we could test this. I realize that would require them to hire more people and maybe it's not worth the money. But yeah, as a general rule, like the range is merely interesting. The cancellation of appointments, uh, especially not knowing what Tesla is telling those people, that one could potentially be concerning. All right, everybody, that is it for me today. I told you it's going to be a really short episode. Not a lot of news that I would, you know, really was excited about. Uh, it totally, <laughs> I know it might seem like it after uh, you listen to the other two episodes. Uh, it totally had nothing to do with uh, being in a time crunch today. Like I genuinely w- went through the news and didn't find all that much that was that I found interesting. So. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Very short episode. If you want to email me, it's Bodie, B-O-D-I-E at 918digital.com. You can find me on x.com at 918digital, formerly Twitter. Uh, I'm on threads. I don't remember what my threads is right now. And I don't remember what my TikTok is. But at some point, I'll look it up and I'll I'll let you know what it is. I, I have plans for my TikTok. I just haven't done anything with it yet. So, all right. Um, that's it for me. I hope you all had a, have a wonderful uh, day and a wonderful week. And I thank you so much for listening to me and putting up with my nonsense. 